In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Happy New Year, Happy New Year to all of you. Feliz Año Nuevo. This first week of January is a week filled with great blessings in the church. So we celebrate some beautiful feast days, and I'd like to go through them. As we ended the old year and we started the new year, with well, January 1st, the church celebrated on January 1st the wonderful, beautiful, beautiful feast day of Mary, the mother of God. is a beautiful icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary is the mother of God. She's the mother of the church, and she's the mother of all of us in the order of grace. So on that day, it was a good day to renew your consecration to Mary. The Theotokos, the mother of God. And all the privileges of Mary, Mary is the Immaculate Conception. Mary has the privilege of the perpetual virginity. Mary was assumed into heaven in body and soul. But the greatest privilege that God gave to Mary is that Mary was called to be the mother of God. And by becoming the mother of God, she also became the mother of us. From the cross, when Jesus said, Woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. From that moment, the beloved disciple took Mary into his home. <clears throat> January 2nd, which was yesterday, the church celebrated two Eastern fathers of the church. There's a branch of theology called patristics, which would be the fathers of the church. You've got the, the Latin branch and you've got the Eastern branch, the Latin fathers of the church, the most famous would be St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, St. Augustine, St. Ambrose, St. Um, Jerome, as well as St. Gregory the Great. The Eastern, you've got St. John Chrysostom, St. Athanasius. Then you've got the saints that we celebrated yesterday, two of them. It was St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nassiasin. Just one point is that they were, they were friends. They established a really deep bond of friendship. And I think that's important for us, that we should have friends. Jesus said to the apostles, I call you friends. What is a friend? Well, Aristotle defines friendship as, friendship as commonality of interests. In other words, you have shared interest with that person. Thomas Aquinas says on a human level, the most, the strongest bond on a human level should be between the husband and the wife. There should be a bond of union and friendship between the, spouse, the two spouses. But I like to do, define a spiritual friendship as spiritual friend is someone, your friend, who's truly a friend, that helps you to get closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's our best friend. So those two saints can help us to establish good, solid human relationships, good friendships. And today, <clears throat> which is the 3rd of January, we celebrate a relatively modern feast. But the concept goes back 2,000 years. And this is, today we celebrate the feast day of the holy name of Jesus. Where did this name come from? What does it mean? And how can we venerate this name? Let's try to address those three questions. Where does this name come from? How can we venerate it? Okay, and what does his name mean? Where does this name actually come from? Well, if you go to Luke chapter 1, we encounter Mary 
in dialogue with the Archangel Gabriel. The Archangel Gabriel greets Mary as full of grace and says to her that she will have a child. She says, how can this happen since I do not know man? And the Archangel Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit will overcome, will out overshadow you, the Shekinah. That which will be conceived in you come from the Holy Spirit. And the Archangel says, his name will be Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. So what he said was two things, the name itself and the meaning of the name. The name is Jesus, and the meaning is that Jesus came to save us. He came to save us from sin, sadness, confusion, disorientation, anger, and bitterness, and slavery to the devil, but especially came to save us from the eternal fires of hell so that we can go to heaven. How can we honor this name, the name of Jesus? Well, years ago, when we would go to uh, Catholic schools, the nuns, those good traditional nuns, uh, would teach us many beautiful things. And one was that when you hear the name, when you hear the name of Jesus, you should bow your head. You should bow your heads in reverence every time you hear that holy name. Because it's a holy name, Jesus, you should be bowing your head. Is there any biblical <clears throat> reference or biblical allusion? Yes. St. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says, At the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven on earth and under earth shall bow to the honor and glory of God. So simple at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. By bowing and bending the knee, we're showing our homage, <coughs> our respect, and our <coughs> adoration to Jesus Christ, who is Lord of Lords and he's King of Kings. So how can we how can we really live out and how can we live out and assimilate the, the wonderful graces that comes from the holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, here's a way. Our spiritual life is a battle. It's a constant battle. It's a battle between, we have, we have three basic enemies, the devil, the flesh, and the world. Those are the three enemies that we have to confront. The devil, the flesh, and the world. When the devil attacks us through, with temptations, and they're going to come. Whether we like it or not, the devil is out there to tempt us. St. Peter says the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour, resist him, solid in the faith. He, calls, he compares him to a roaring lion, a lion that gets a hold of you. He's going to rip you apart. So he says, resist him, solid in the faith. So what we can do is when we are tempted by the devil, and temptations will come, we can invoke and call upon the holy name of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. By the way, when a priest carries out an exorcism, he invokes the holy name of Jesus, he invokes the sweet and powerful name of Mary, and he invokes St. Joseph, because St. Joseph is also known as the terror of demons. When it terrify the demons, kick them back into hell, invoke St. Joseph. So this is what we can do. Call upon Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in the midst of the storms of our life. So I hope that all of you have a great reverence for the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that at the name of Jesus you will bow your head in reverence. And when you recognize you're being tempted by the enemy to offend God, call out upon the name of Jesus, and the victory will be yours because the victory is God's. So I'd like to close with a beautiful prayer 
in honor of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Then I'd like to give you my priestly blessing. I ask you to pray for me, and I will pray for you. Here is that prayer. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, make my heart like unto, your, unto yours. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I breathe forth my soul unto thee. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. So I'll give you my priestly blessing in honor of the holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be blessed by the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. Amen. Thank <sighs> you.